All right, let's, I got, we got to talk Boston Montreal here real quick. 1-1. One, one. Montreal. Oh, my God. That game two is going to – it's a good thing they have a chance to, to kind of pick up from that after the game two collapse. Is there any way to explain, Phil and, and Perry, why Boston has this knack for coming back in games? Well, if you think about that first game, they were all over Montreal. They were. They were. And hit goal posts, hit crossbars. Um, uh, Price was, was fabulous. Uh, he was fabulous in game two also. And then they got, uh, and then instead of hitting the goal post, it hits a defenseman and goes in. You know, Bergeron's goal hits Bouillon and goes into the net. I mean, I don't give a crap who, what goalie you are. That's, that's, a, that's a lucky goal. But is it a lucky goal or is it because he shot it at the net? And that's what the Bruins are doing now. And the Bruins are taking away the Montreal's game. Uh, and if they stay away and can stop the power play of Montreal, which has suddenly become very, very good, and they can't let uh, Subban shoot. They can't. And they're going to overplay him to the, to the limit so that he doesn't get the shot. But this series, is, uh, I, we said it before, it's going six or seven yeah. by estimation. I still think the Bruins are the better team and will win. But uh, Montreal is going to give them a, a fight. For, uh, I never thought I'd ever see a goalie play out, outplay Rask. I didn't because I thought Tuka Rask is just the best. Uh, but uh, Carey Price outplayed him. Yeah. And Tuka Rask, when you think about it, that's his first time he's beaten Montreal in Boston in uh, nine games. I was going to say, I can't believe how Tuka Rask has such problems with Montreal. It's remarkable how one team can have another team's goalie's number. Just I've got, uh, every, time, every time Montreal came down the ice and we're, we're going in, I, it was like I'm watching going, uh-oh, 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 mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Didn't get that feeling when Boston were going in on, on the Montreal, Montreal's goalie, Price, and doing that. I said, boy, they're going to have to make a good shot to beat them. But Rask then made two great saves in game two. And after he made those saves, things seemed to settle down, and the Bruins started to take over. And I mean, totally take over. Every, I mean, they're the best team in the third period in the league, which tells me they're in great shape. Yeah. And they're, they're physically fit. But the, not only that, they've got a reserve because they use four lines, and that fourth line is just as he may not score as much as the first or two, second, but boy, that third and fourth line, they come at you, come at you, come at you, come at you, and they just chip in with goals, and that's what makes the Bruins so good. Yeah, you know, also another thing I want to say about the what's good about the Bruins. Zeno Chara is not having to log 35 minutes a game. They're getting production out of Tory Krug, out of Dougie Hamilton. They've got, you mentioned like the fourth line. I would say sprinkled throughout this team are some young rising stars. They're getting production out of the guys you would expect from some guys that you don't expect. And when you look at Montreal, you're expecting, you know, P.K. Subban to be the guy. Boston's come up with some players out of nowhere. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, and you know, with the Bruins, I think because they're such a big physical team, they wear teams down, and maybe that's why they've had these third period comebacks. Because as Phil said, they're deep, four lines deep. Not too many teams are as deep up front as the Bruins are. And because they're so physical, they just hit you time and time again. They wear you down. It's kind of like I heard Nick Kiprios on the radio say this the other day. It's, it's a guy like Milan Lucic. He hits you and hits you and hits you. And after a while, you're going to break. And when the opposition breaks, it seems to be when the Bruins take advantage, and that's why they're able to come back from whatever deficit it seems they're in, even in the third period. So, guys, let me ask you guys this: Have you ever seen a defenseman, a defenseman like PK Subban, dodge checks so much? This guy slips checks beautifully. Yeah. Holy mac, he's good at that. Really good. Yeah, he's very good at initiating contact, but. Very good at avoiding contact. Yeah, like yeah. he'll sl- uh, turn, or that time he went down, and the guy went over him and hurt himself. See, that's something you just... That was Thornton, right? And Thornton thought it yeah. was a dirty play. 
I don't think it was. That's what he thought it was, right, though, right? right he, yeah. said P, he said P.K. Subban apologized to him, and P.K. Subban, when they asked him, that wasn't quite the version he gave. But to the point of what Phil is saying, this guy's a very special player. Yeah. I mean, he's got a ton of personality. He's got a ton of talent. He's got a ton of ability. There's something special about this guy that, you know, he, he, again, this is, this is a guy who could, was lucky to get on the Olympic team, was barely used at all. Didn't have the greatest start to this season, but all right. of a sudden this guy is really, really pouring it on. Right? And and I don't care what if if he'll deny it. I'm sure there's a part of the, him thinking, okay, the coach of the Bruins is Claude Julian, who was one of the assistant coaches on Team Canada, who didn't play me more than one game at the Olympics. I'm going to show him he made a mistake. And I think that's a little chip on PK Subban's shoulder that is helping to motivate him here in this series against the Boston Bruins. Uh, Tony, I respectfully disagree with you. I think P.K. Subban plays that way, no matter yep. where he is or what he is. Let's not forget this guy won the Norris Trophy last year. Fair enough. I have to agree with Phil. Of course I don't was. think he even gives two craps about who the other coaches are. That one of the guys, we're, we want to go back to Steve Iserman and, and Martin St. Louis. That stuff is so far behind, Tony. Come on, man. You're reaching on that one. And i got to call you out. And if we were on Wheel of Fortune, I'd call, <laughs> I'd call you out right now. Hey, leave Phil alone. On, oh, that was awesome stuff. It is. I was, was totally great. complimentary. Oh, okay, of okay. Hey, so, so we've got a bit of a, a war a war of words going on between Montreal and uh, Oh, yeah, but that Boston. happens was, all, all the time they play. Well, I was going to say, does that really have an impact? Like, does that, like, for the Bruins to say, oh, we figured out Carey Price, does that really at the end of the day, have an impact on either team? Of course not. No. Of course not. It doesn't because Carey Price is going to play his game. Yeah. And I don't think Carey Price, uh, I, I don't think, think he let in a bad goal yet in this series. I thought he did against uh, the Lightning. Yeah. But I sure don't think he's let a bad in goal in so far now. I mean, he made 48 saves the first game. I, uh, what else do you need from the guy? You know what I mean? 